Welcome to another interview in the WealthWithoutGoalsetting.com interview series, sponsored by GreatSmallBusinessAdvice.com and the TheBusinessTransformationShow.com. This interview is hosted by award-winning author and international speaker, Allison Phillips. We invite you to share your thoughts, comments, or questions as Allison and her guest reveal powerful stories, insights, and life-changing shifts you can make in your own life and business starting today. Be sure to have a pen and notepad handy to capture any golden nuggets that may be great alignment with who you are and where you are in your own journey right now. Before we get started, here's a little insight about Allison's guest in this interview. The son of Jamaican immigrants, Derek Mills, was born in Birmingham in 1965. He grew up happily there with six brothers and sisters until the age of 13, when his mother died. This plunged him into the world of a stutterer. After school and various menial jobs, Derek went into financial services as a trainee. Throughout his 20s and 30s, far from being successful, Derek had great financial challenges and debt. His situation became dire, and at one point his family home was moments away from being repossessed by the bank. He was working long hours that kept him away from his family. By the end of 2003, in a moment of despair, Derek discovered a way to live his life differently. Out of this came a unique approach that changed everything irrevocably. In a few short years, he went from being desperate, working six days a week until late at night, to a millionaire working in the same business, working less than half the time. He did this using his daily standards approach. This is the approach that he began to share with others around the world. Derek is the author of The 10 Second Philosophy, published by Hay House. Using the power of true self and the utilization of standards instead of goals to achieve happiness and success, Derek is invited to speak internationally and to coach and advise others. Derek is the creator and power behind the standards revolution through which he shares his philosophy of living by daily standards. If you have ever set goals and not achieved them, then daily standards are the missing link to your happiness and success. If you have never set goals, then standards is an alternative way to live the life of your dreams. He is a featured expert in the inspirational personal development movie, Keeper of the Keys, starring Jack Canfield, John Gray, and Marcy Shimoff. Derek is married to Jerry. They have four children and live in Worcestershire, England. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another interview in the Wealth Without Goal Setting video series. And today, my guest is Derek Mills, all the way from the UK. Welcome, Derek. Hi, Alison. Pleasure to be here. Happy to have you here. So I read your book and was uh, just amazed and um, forever impacted <laughs> by wow. the content of your book, The 10 Second Philosophy. So I'm thrilled to have you here today. My first question for you is what I'm asking a lot of the people in this series is, what's your response to that wide-held belief that goal setting is a really important part of how you achieve success as a business owner. What's your impression? What's your feeling on that? Generally, it's um, it's been pretty much the philosophy for the last let's call it the last 110 years or so, when we began seeing these these works coming out that pretty much said to be happy and successful, set goals, then achieve them. Um, my view is really it's, it's actually it's more than the view. I've done work and research now, worked different places around the world. When I ask people the question, you know, how's that process working out for you? Most people tend to go, well, it's kind of not, you know. And I mean, from India to Dubai to Holland in America, the UK, so it's not a cultural thing. Uh, I ask the question, you know, that process that you've been using to have that weight, that income, that job, that partner, that whatever that level of wealth, uh, this goal setting mechanism, how's it working? Just tell me how. And most people tend to say, it's not really. So I then begin to question. You know, how long would you use a system that wasn't really working for you? So my view is really, really simple. I was also involved in that process, setting goals and planning for about 18 years. And then I got to my late 30s and I realized it wasn't really working. <laughs> so I had to then develop something else that came from inside of me. So I believe we can achieve massive success without goal setting. If you have to set goals because you've been conditioned so for the last 100 odd years, then there are things we can do to support that process, but let's look at goals. Uh, let's look at goals as a way of of not being 
really successful anywhere in the world to any major audience. In my, as you know, my own story, I haven't set goals for over 10 years now, 10 years and a month and uh, since I've been goal setting and the greatest journey, joy, discovery, success and happiness has come in my life since the moment I decided not to set any further goals. And so Derek, what was the, what, uh, you know what's interesting that struck me is that you said that this is pretty much universal where you found that goal setting has not worked successfully, largely unsuccessfully, for mm. people across all continents. So it's not, it's interesting that you shared that because I always thought well, maybe it's a, you know, a very US based kind of mindset, but it sounds like you found that to be different. Yeah, one of the questions open events rather than they were closed events, but I don't know, to an open event, uh, whether it be from California, Dubai, India, Bali, Jakarta, whatever, I tend to ask an open question, which is, you know, how many people here have set goals to be happy and successful? You know, that includes financially for most people. And of course, almost everybody puts their hands up if they're in that kind of audience. And then I then say, now please tell me, you know, how's that working out for you? <laughs> and then uh, people are, you know, shuffling and, <clears throat> and giggling and then suddenly realizing, interesting, isn't it? And it's the same response, whichever audience. So I go, okay, so here's the thing. If you've set goals to be happy, successful, a certain weight, a certain amount of income, a certain house level, a certain neighborhood, a certain job, a partner, whatever it might be, you tell yourself, or we tell ourselves, that when we have the thing, then we'll be happy. We then have another dilemma, because happiness is a now experience. We can't be happy in the future, I say. So well, if we have all these things, when we achieve them, that we become happy in the future, that's our first hurdle. In fact, it's a complete block, because happiness is a now experience. So if we have a process that says, be happy in the future, it naturally creates a disconnect with who we are, a disconnect with our gifts, and it puts our happiness to some degree on pause. And it says, hold, wait. The challenge, when you pause yourself, your best gifts are not in the game, are not in your life. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is work out how to get the best of you into your life right now, today. And Derek, what was the catalyst for you because you were goal setting for a pretty long time in your life. So what was the catalyst where you felt or decided to make the change to not holding to that whole um, belief about goal setting? What was the catalyst in the experience that got you on that path? The catalyst for me was actually um, paying attention. Uh, I genuinely believe that the, the, the world, the universe does conspire. And when we pay attention, we can get the gems of knowledge that we need to make shift. So for me, it was around being you know, broke. Um, and I say broke, just for clarification, broke means having the sheriff in your house taking your furniture. Broke means having your house, um, going to court to save your house from foreclosure, I think as you call it in the States. But that's you no know, broke. And paying, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul and struggling financially, working six days a week. One night, just over 10 years ago, I had a question now, my first coach turned up. My first coach was nothing more than the office security guard. Now, they have this work on the business park, different guys locking the buildings up different nights, but this one night, almost at 10 in the evening, someone said to me, you know, who's locked so Mr. Mills, is it time to go now? Can we lock up? And I'd say, well, give me some more time. I asked for another 10 minutes. Then he walked away and came back, and he asked me this one question that changed the whole of my life. And the question was nothing more than, what time did you get in this morning? That's a non-question to most, but for me in that moment, I'm working six days a week, I've been up since six on the road at seven in the office at eight, and now at 10 in the evening, I'm still here six days a week. This isn't my life. This is what it's meant to be. I'm meant for greater things than this. We all are meant for greater things. And I took an introspective journey. And in that first 10 seconds, wisdom was revealed to me. And the key from that wisdom was, was actually one of the key practical things was stop setting more goals. Goals are saying, be happy in the future, whereas you live in the now. So it also taught me that everything I needed was already inside. That, to me, was the greatest gift. All I had to do was tap in, open up, and act from that place, because thoughts and philosophies without words are a waste of time. It's about taking action as well. Thank you, Derek. And what, how did that impact your life right then? Like, What was the changes that you made when you had that breakthrough mm -hmm. that really all you need was inside of you and happiness is a now experience. Those are two powerful statements 
how did it impact your life right then, or did it impact your life right then? Of course. For a bit of background, I up until that point, I spent 18 years working in financial services for a very large UK organisation on a self-employed basis, which means it was on commissions and fees only. And out of about 1,200 agents, I was normally about a thousandth on the list for a very long period of time, obviously. Um, put me to myself and began to follow the wisdom on the inside. Part of that wisdom said, set and live by daily standards. Now, for clarification, a standard based on the philosophy has five key aspects. A standard is a basis, criterion, level, quality, or rule that we set from within, from our truth, and we live from that place. Yes, in your life, and yes, in your business. So that I set standards and drop the goals thing, be able to live by daily standards in my clients, the quality of clients I would take on, whether I'd work in the office or out the office, the times I would work, the minimum transaction, covered everything, my health, my family, my time, taking my kids to school, it's a whole range of areas. So we then rolled forward three years. Apart from the fact that I became happy that very first night, three years later, I'm a millionaire doing the same job. And the company is now 1,600 strong, and I'm 28th in the company, having increased my income by about 10 to 12 times. That's when people turned up and said, you do the same thing you always did in terms of same products, same building, same office. Okay, back in those days, I had to share the office with other people because when you're not very good, they herd you together, don't they? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, but as my results went through, I became a senior partner at the company, and you know, the rest is people turned and say, "How did you do that?" I began to share what I did. But you know, so three years later, I'm a millionaire. The following year, which was 2007, I earned a million, my first million dollars in just that year. So you can tell that when you do the same thing in the same economy, in the same country, with the same product for the same company, none of those things are the factor. What's the difference? It's what I did on the inside, the standards that I set and lived by from that day that allowed me to engage at a higher level in the rest of the world. And it was as if by magic, the moment I raised my standards, that the people I wanted to do business with, the organizations, saw me in a different way. If my standards are here, they engage with me here. The minute you raise your standards in business and say, this is how we work, these are our standards. These are our basis, criteria, quality, levels, and rules that you need to understand to do business with us. The world basically said, oh, if you're no longer here, we'll engage with you here. And I then began to, to really get the wealthy and wonderful people as clients in such big numbers. I had to get other agents to help me to service those clients and customers. So it's about setting standards, yes at a level and then allow the world to engage you at that new standard. Otherwise, it will treat you where you set your standards. This is not something that we've made up. It's something that when we pay attention, we just notice. That's how it is. And Derek, could you share for our viewers, what is a specific example of a standard that you set, uh, perhaps an example in in your personal life and also an example in your business life so that we can uh, have a deeper understanding for what a standard would look like because you're saying you shifted from goal setting and setting goals to setting clear standards so it would be helpful to hear what's a specific example of a standard uh, in both in your business life and also personal life that really created significant change for you. Are you there Derek? Okay, so that's cool. Uh, one of the things I did that night, that very first night, with the recognition that my life was running the way that I didn't actually... Are you still there, Alison? I'm still here. Oh, sorry, because the screen was frozen, sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, one of the things I realized was that the whole of my life had been based upon a set of standards that I hadn't consciously set, and they didn't come from within me. I just adopted them. So, for example, in my financial services business, I would see clients anywhere in the country, anytime, any place, you know, pretty much six days a week, seven if you'd let me. I'd always go and see clients, and I'd take on anyone as a client, which generally meant I had the lowest income clients, and I'd go try miles to see them. Today, all clients come to the office, and wherever they are in the country, I made a decision that all clients would now come to see me in the practice in the office. I set a minimum criteria for the level of clients income that I would have, otherwise they couldn't be a client of mine, below which I'd refer them to somebody else. It's a level where I have different parts of the practice looking after different standards. And but they also worked out that I wouldn't do the six day a week thing. So as the standard is a, a rule, a quality, a basis or criteria that you set that's true for you and helps you to serve others properly. Mm -hmm. I also said actually I can't do the six days a week thing and, and serve people. 
I'll fall over. Mm -hmm. So I said, actually, two and a half to three days a week, which I would see clients. I even set the days I would see them, the times I would see them, just then, then projected my new business standards and said, to engage with me, here's how we work. And we've engaged in this way, it allows me to serve you and others better. The key thing about what you said about uh, is it business and personal, those are the business standards. And the magic that happened, I keep talking about this magic because I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, this was this has done this conversation is after the event. In that moment I didn't know what was going to happen. What actually happened is they got so much more respect from people, contacts to me. They gave me more of their wealth to look after. My business You still there, Alison? I'm still here. Great, okay. <laughs> um, but you are cutting out quite a bit. Yeah. Um, my gut is telling me to switch to the telephone. How do you feel about that? Uh, yes. Okay, that's cool. Let's do that. Okay. What I began to then do was to also realize that I was always, with goal setting, going to be happy one day into the future. That's what goals do. They tell you, you know, achieve this, this, and this, and when you've got it one day in the future, then you'll be happy. And what I noticed by my work I've done around the world, when everyone from pretty much every continent sets goals, they can't help but attach ha happiness, attach happiness to the achievement of those goals. The challenge is that happiness is a now experience. So here's where I come from. When we set goals for future happiness and success, we detach from our current happiness and from the current gifts in our lives. In other words, we can't be present. And if we can't be present in our lives, we can't achieve and we can't effectively achieve and create great lives. So there's really two camps which I understand that exist. One camp says set goals and be happy one day. The other says discover who you really are today, live from that place and use a practical approach to keep you in that place and keep you present. Mm. And I love what you said there, that happiness is a now experience, and so many times we set goals to achieve something in the future, and it's always in the future, it's never now, and so we never experience fulfillment, joy, happiness, or any of those things, because we're always going for the next goal to achieve exactly. what we think is going to help us get there. Yeah, and we've been conditioned for the last 100 years to do this. Mm. What I know for absolute certainty, because I've asked enough audiences now, is you know, when they set those goals, they say they're going to be happy one day in the future as a result of achieving those goals. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to have people to do is live their lives for today and to be present. Because we might set to achieve a goal in three or five or ten or twenty years' time, but there's no guarantee we're even going to be there in three, five, and ten or twenty years' time. Mm -hmm. you know, so we really have to find another mechanism that keeps us present and makes us live our life today in the here and now. And this is a, a full... Um, a real fuller part of the 10 second philosophy that shares is that being your true self and being present right now. And the way we do this is by setting daily standards that keep us in our present self mm. when we work from that place. Mm -hmm. And Derek, could you share with our viewers and our listeners, what was the catalyst that moved you from goal setting to setting standards? And we'll talk a little bit more about standards as well because that's a great concept in your book, The 10 Second Philosophy. But before we get there, if you can just share with our viewers real quick, what was the catalyst, what was the experience that moved you from goal setting to a life where you are setting standards instead of goals? Yeah, one of the key things we all have to do is, you know, which I didn't do, of course, for 18 years, was to pay attention. And I paid attention one day when, at the end of 2008, I'm in the office one night at around 10 o'clock in the evening. And I've been working since very early that morning. And the office security guard came in to lock up the building on the business park. He asked me um, if I was ready to go. And I said, no, give me 10 more minutes. And then he went away and came back. And he asked me again, am I ready to go? And, and he said, said to me, look, what time did you get in this morning? And I realized in that moment, Alison, that... I'd been up since 6 o'clock on the road at 7, in the office at 8 o'clock in the morning. It was now 10 o'clock in the evening, which means I wouldn't get home to about 11. And I've been doing this pattern six days a week for years, missing my wife, missing my children. And ultimately, I was there, and I realized, apart from being broke, which I was, apart from being near depressed, which I was, that this life wasn't even mine. I was caught in the trap 
believe what I've been told in the previous years by other teachers of the past. And I realized that me, just like many people all around the world, the system really wasn't working, wasn't honoring and serving me. So that night, I had this, what I know you might call an epiphany or in a moment, where in about 10 seconds, clarity came to me. When I realized my, my response to his question, what came out of me was something completely different. Stop setting goals. Because in setting goals, your happiness will always be in the future. And what also came out was instead set some daily standards for your life, from your truth, from inside of you, and stick to those standards just one day at a time as you're given life. From this place, you will be happy. That's mm. what I began to do. And so the standards um, sound like they have a couple of really powerful components to them. They're not goals because they're only set for one day today. Yeah, and yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. I've not heard that that um, process before. So it's just well, for today. Exactly. I mean, a bit like um, Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm. They simply say, and this has worked for decades, they simply say, I'm not going to drink today. You could mm. take a biblical, biblical reference of this and where Christ talked about, you know, give us this day. When he taught the Lord's Prayer, give us this day. He didn't say give us this week, give us this month, give us this fiscal year, give us this quarter. He just said give us this day. So it's actually about working in the day. Standards that we set for our lives, we set them in the key areas of our lives, including business and wealth and family and all the rest of it. But we say to ourselves, when we wake up that morning, I'm going to stick to my standards today. And we set up mechanisms and buddy systems, which we talk about in the book, around maintaining us and keeping us and helping us to stay in our standards just for that day. In fact, for no longer until we go back to bed that night. That's the only commitment, just for that day. This is not a three-week thing, a three-year thing. It's just until you go back to bed this evening. You stick to your standards. Mm. And if you use the, when we talk about the mechanisms and using buddy systems, all these things are designed to keep us in our truth. When we set standards from inside ourselves, we help to stay inside ourselves. In other words, we stay in our truth. We stay in our true self. And we all know that when we stay in our truth and stay in our true self, our gifts begin to flow. And that's how I turn my business life around, by getting my gifts to flow in my life, by using standards as the practical part of the process. Mm. And, um, and it's so freeing, too, to know that the only day that you need to be concerned about is the present one. And you don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next month, what's going to happen next year. It's freeing as well to just focus on yeah. setting your standard for that day. So let me dig into a little bit of the standard. So what's an example of a standard that you set in your business and also an example that you set in your personal life where you saw just a phenomenal turnaround in your in your overall life experience. Okay. Clarify first. Let's the, uh, look at this thing around the standard. A standard is a basis, criterion, level, quality, or rule. One of those five things. Basis, criterion, level, quality, or rule that we set from inside ourselves, if we're an individual, or inside our businesses, if we're a business. And we commit to that just for the day. So when I did this um, uh, just under two, over 10 years ago, one area I set a standard with my business was around the type of client I was seeing and transacting with. I used to drive all over the UK, all over England, six days a week until late at night, getting home around you know, 10, 11 o'clock in the evening, and, and seeing anyone for any scrap of business. And of course, what I found when I did that, people didn't respect me very much. I was, you know, just, I was at their beck and call. I didn't get much respect, mm. and I got scraps of business. So I had to work even harder when you're living on scraps. You've got to get a lot of scraps together. So I, I set some new standards that first evening when I had that uh, epiphany or awakening where all new clients and prospective clients and existing clients must come to the office if they're going to continue having my service and for me to serve them. I also set standards around the minimum transaction that they must have in order to engage with me. I was getting little respect when my minimum transactions were so small. I also set up uh, certain days in my diary where these are the days I see clients. Why? Because weekend, I'm a family guy. Not the family guy, obviously, but you know, <laughs> I'm, a <family> guy. <laughs> I'm a family guy. Friday was, you know, in the personal thing now, what became what's called Jerry time, which my wife is called Geraldine, or Jerry for short. That became our day. Kids are at school, not seeing clients on the Friday. That became our time. Personal standards. I would realized that I'd been leaving the house in the morning and getting to the office every single morning when I really wanted to be with my kids. So I began to set a, I set a new standard, began to take my kids to school every single 
morning. And I did that even right up to this morning. If I'm at home, I take my kids to court in the morning as standard, not as a maybe or would like to do one day as standard. And three to four times a week, I pick them up from school. I've been doing that for the last decade. Didn't do it for the first part of their life, but have for the last decade. Mm. So I set up all these standards, and I became immediately happy because I knew in that moment I was living my life as me. Now, some people might think, actually, that's very, very nice, that's very good, but how did you increase your business? Um, I increased the business because it was as if by magic, the moment I gave myself these higher standards and operated from that place, the world began to say, oh, now we see you at a different level, in a different place. We're going to transact, give you the respect, and treat you and refer you to other people from that level. So people began to do more business with me and refer people to me. So within three years of beginning to set standards that I created from within myself, within three years, I went from being broke and working six days a week to my first million, working three and a half days a week. Wow. And then, and then the following year, which was 2007, um, I did a million dollars personal earnings in just that year. Now here's the thing I want to make really, really sure. I know this is about creation of business and wealth and success. But let's all clarify this. Money doesn't mean success. To mm. me, the real definition of wealth is to the degree that you discover who you truly are and you give your gifts to the world. You should be rewarded from the world for those gifts. But the joy, the happiness of that journey is that you get to live this journey, this life given to you, not to another, but to you, as you. Therefore, you become happy immediately. Wow. People didn't see the money turn up for about three years, you know, when I went to the first million. I went from the bottom of the company of about 1,200 agents to the top when it was 1,600 strong. I was, in, I was kind of 28 from the company, working less, less time version than everybody mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. People began to turn up, but they, so they could count the money after a few years. But here's what I could count. I could count the feelings about living my life as myself from day one, from the first night. My children noticed the difference. In, you know, it, we've got, we haven't got long enough to discuss the benefits of, as a father or mother, being around your children instead of being away from them 16 mm. hours a day with your own husband, wife, partner, whatever we have. When you're with those people more of the time because you decide to live your life truly as you, it gives wealth in relationships beyond any bank account. And that's what's been my experience. So I hope in some way that helps explain. Yes, that was powerful. And so what I heard you say is that for the last decade, you have not set goals. What you've done is set standards. And in your business, a couple of shifts you made was, I'm not going to run around the country driving hours on end trying to meet with clients. They're coming to me. I'm also not going to be working with clients under a certain level of revenue. And that's another standard that you set for yourself. But what was really critical there is that, Perhaps the most powerful standard is family became a priority, and you started cool. taking your kids to school, you started picking them up from school, and just the wealth of being present with your family, and that's a really good point, is that wealth is not just money. Wealth is the, ex the life experience that you have, and it sounds like you had a wealth of family back in your court in terms of your life experience and also wealth in terms of finances, becoming a millionaire and then creating your first million in a single year. So all of those things is part of the wealth, and I'm just amazed that just that shift from standards from goals to standards is creating that for you. And you also mentioned your true self, and I know you talk a lot about that in your book, The 10-Second Philosophy. For the benefit of our listeners, what is your true self, and what is the process for accessing, because it sounds like you accessed something inside of you except, instead of something outside of you. So what is that thing that you're accessing inside of you, and how do you do that? Okay, the, the true self is actually who we really are. I think everybody listening to this conversation now must be aware that we're not um, bodies with spirit. We are spirit with body. So the, the true self is the, the true essence of who we really are. It's the thing that we came into this world as, the being, the spirit, the energy. It's that which will outlast us when the physical bodies return to dust. That's the true self. And it has wisdom. It has sagacity. It has awarenesses. It holds and is our truth. But there's a challenge. We come to the world, and there are so many uh, distractions in terms of away from our truth that by the time we get to teenage and then to young adults, we don't even know who we are anymore. 
and then we spend the second half or third half of our part of our life trying to rediscover that which we had lost. The true self is a thing that we've lost. It's who we really are. It's what we are on the inside, the essence of us. So the great thing about setting standards is not just a way of becoming successful financially or improving your business results, because there's a lot of other added benefits of doing that. But the key thing is setting standards from within is they, they are set from within. When we sit down and take the time, which I'll cover in a second, to discover our standards, we get to realize who we really are. And our true self is a part of us that's setting those standards. Mm. And here's the great thing. If we live by our standards from our truth, we remain longer in our true self. So I began by saying that the true self is wise, it is sagacious, it has awareness, it's part of the universe, part of God. So think about it. If that part of our life comes back into our life, there's no surprise we can turn our lives around. No surprise we'll wake up and find ourselves to be geniuses. Because I know that I'm a genius. <laughs> and when I woke up, I realized, I'm a genius. Mm. I'm always a genius, and so are you, and everybody else out there is a genius. What we have to do is to tap into that place and get there. And how do I know I'm a genius? Because when I woke up, I did such, quote-unquote, incredible things that, by the way, number one, I could never have set a goal around the things I've achieved in the last 10 years. And that's just to be really specific, to say that I had no idea some of the abilities and the gifts and the talents that I had. So it was literally impossible to have set goals around those things. Hmm. And real genius becomes things that I have achieved, whether it be the, the book, the speaking, the writing, the mentoring, the executive film producing, and all, that, all those other things that I didn't know they were there. And I think it's the same for each and every one of us. There are talents inside you right now that you don't even know are there, but you came here with that stuff. And when we live by daily standards and access our true self and pay attention to the messages from within, we bit by bit begin to, we bit by bit begin to access the truth that's inside. That then begins to feed us, and we will then create a life for ourselves we couldn't have written down. That's so powerful. This, this is how you know, this is the true self. This is the gift of who we truly are. I talk about the non-self. That was me until I was 38. The true self is me accessing more of myself, my truth, who I really am from the age of 38 onwards over the last decade. And, and you did ask about, of course, you know, how specifically. So, you know, that my first access of my true self was in my, you know, the, the, the title of the book is A 10-Second Philosophy because my first 10-second moment was an, you might call it an accidental access of my true self. What I believe is that the universe said, you know, send him this question. And the question was really simple from the office security guard late that night. What time did you get in this morning? And that allowed me to just say to myself, hmm, go inside, pause, stop, consider, and get the feeling from deep within. And I allowed that feeling to continue, almost like, without even thinking about it, going into a mini meditation. And mm -hmm. in that meditation, in that, in that quiet spot, in that place, allowing the voice that, to speak to me that was already there, and with the joy in that moment for me was I recognized the voice. It was my own voice speaking to me, saying, this is who you are. And you're, if you're noticing why you're not happy right now, it's because you're not acting from this place, which is who you are. If you're doing all these things, these constructs of the world, they're putting you away from this place. So stop doing those things, and instead, come back to this place. Stop. Pause. Go inside. Settle. Connect with yourself. And then act upon the, the, the wisdom, the guidance, and yes, the messages that come from that place. Many of these messages and guidance will not make any sense. They'll be intuitive. They'll be instinctive. They won't make logical thinking sense. But the truth rarely does. Mm. So what, we end, what I ended up doing was to uh, realizing that I was in a 10-second moment. And from that moment, I began to take lots and lots of 10-second moments when I had a question from someone else, a word, thought, question, phrase, or idea came to me, I would just sit down and stop, pause, go back into that place. And then with the breath, just notice where I am, sit down, pay attention. And more importantly, when I got guidance or wisdom or intuition from within, I literally followed through. If you said, go right, call that person, do this, act in this way, access this meeting, do these things, that's what I would do, because I knew it was the wiser part of me that was speaking. And also, I was very blessed. I had so many problems <laughs> prior to that night in my life, you know, which, you, which you've heard, you know, the, 
mm -hmm. depression and being broken mm -hmm. and stuff and not seeing my family there. I was so willing to listen to my truth. And so many of us are not willing to listen to our truth yeah. because we do not realize that the truth has the solution. You, that your truth, the guru for you, the genius of you is inside. But if we don't pay attention, we could get to 97 and still be struggling and wondering why the world is so tough. Mm. Uh, in the free world, we get a chance to access our truth. We can't do this if we're struggling in the desert or in some barren land. Mm -hmm. But we, can, we, we listen to this conversation. We can do this. But if we give up that responsibility, if we, if we give up that right, we cannot then complain that this is all I've got from 97, this is all I became. Mm -hmm. There's far more to it than that. Yeah. So it is about taking the time. Yes, and for our, true self. For, our, um, for our listeners, Derek, in his book, 10 Second Philosophy, does detail the st a, a real good step-by-step -step of how to access your true self. So I'd encourage people to get the book and really connect with it. It was powerful in my life as well. Derek, you, um, what I'm hearing you say is that when we set goals, we're not really accessing our true self, and we live our lives in such a way that we're unaware of the amazing brilliance, talents, and wisdom that's within ourselves that we can't even set goals around because we haven't even discovered what it is. And that process of accessing your true self then unearths that, and then that becomes what your, your purpose is, what you're actually doing in your life and in your business. My question for you is uh, we have a lot of business owners who are listening, and a lot of us are taught to you know, have these clear business goals for the year and business plans for the year and marketing plans for the year. Um, do you have business plans and marketing plans? And, if, and just share what your experience is around that and whether that also changed in terms of how you ran your business. Okay. So the first thing is to recognize that um, most models that we're taught don't actually work for most people. So what I've come from in my business, which has made all the difference in both businesses, is my intention. You know, who am I? What's my purpose here? What's really expressing itself through me? And, and living from that place. So I, I set up my intention and I do the things today that help me to remain in that place and in, you know, just very briefly to make the difference or to change lives and, and all the rest of it. So I'll set up my business like, like you would do. Have a strategy, have an idea of what you're doing, and you know you need to have you know, a building or a phone. You need to have these things in place. You can't just have a bunch of standards and sit in your room and do nothing. So practically, we have to have business intentions. But what we've done, most people have done this, is have taken those intentions and created these goals and plans and put. You know, if you're an NLP person, you call it a well-formed outcome. You put a time scale around it. If you're just a normal goal planner, you put a time scale around it, and all of a sudden begin to ask yourself, the things you want to achieve and things you want to get as a result of achieving those goals, are they really who you are or, they, or are they the things that the world has conditioned you to say that you would want? So why does a guy tell me when he's 29 he wants a BMW and, and a four-bedroomed house in that particular town? Because that's what the world has told him is success. And I say, hold on a second, what if you could really access yourself and have far more than that in whatever that means in so many other ways? But also, if you did it in such a way, the world would give you more, far more financially as well as love and the sharing capacity. What if you would have that instead? Some people would just still go for the car and the house. I have the BMW and that house, please. I think that's a loss. So what I do is this. I set up my intentions, and I put all my intentions out there every single day. And I have strategies, but not one of my team in the last... 10 years has ever heard me utilize the goals in our strategy it's around what are we doing why are we doing it what's our intention who are we honoring and serving now let's act from that place now I'm aware by the way now the reason I wrote the book I'm aware that that's contrary to how most businesses work but let's have a look at something and just see a couple of real examples of what happens when you work from that place firstly what I share in the book is around um, the what's called the A, B, C, and C so when we are authentic, in other words, acting from our purpose and from ourself, we become more balanced as human beings. We become centered in our dealings with ourselves and with others. And the thing about having the authentic, balanced, centered person, what I call the A, B, C, and C, the and C is the connection. Now this is the thing I began to share with people about how the business really turned around. Because I began to act in my standards, and I became authentic, 
balanced and centered. What I noticed was people were turning up and just saying, it's you. We've been to other places. We've had other advisors and other things. And by the way, your, your charges aren't the lowest. And this and we've got to come to you all the time. But we just feel really great about this, we've, this space we've created for us. You know, this, this feeling, it feels right. And here's what I began to learn. Every single human being out there, whether you work, whether you run a store, a shop, or a sales business, every other person out there is looking for somewhere to plug back in. And this is nothing to do with business, but it's everything to do with business. Everyone wants that connection. And the best place they find that connection is with those who are authentic, balanced, and centered. Mm. That then gives an unconscious connection with people outside of you, and they begin to say, look, I want to do business with you. And I found that my business went through the roof because more and more people were saying, you know, virtually using these words, this just feels right. Or we've got something here we haven't experienced before. Or no other advisor has mentioned this stuff or has talked to us in this way. Or, and what I found, funnily enough, was if I was dealing with a couple, which I did most of the time, and they're wealthy couples, that the wife was far more uh, aware of this stuff than the husband. But then, of course, if it was wise, you'd follow the advice. <laughs> so, so what was interesting is that, see, I didn't know this was going to happen. I was, rec- I was recording as it went along, meeting after meeting uh, over years, and, of course, now the first decade, with people just saying, look, your charges aren't even the lowest. And we met people who were cleverer than you. But as far as our business is concerned, taking care of us and doing business with ourselves and our family, it's you. That's the first thing. The second that I, I think I began to... Uh, share with others, and you know, I put this into the book as well. In the research for the book, I began to look at organisations where we want to be perceived tr- from truth, as in not just perceived where it's not true, but perceived from truth to be a standards-based organisation. So, I'm doing some work in uh, in early 2014 with one of the largest wealth management companies in the in the world. Um, I think from the I think it's the 17th largest company in the world, full stop. And I mentioned them in the book. And I mentioned other firms as well. So I talked about um, you know, AXA, Porsche, Chrysler, Disney, Marriott. Why did I? Because in the research that I did, I would have noticed that those firms that set standards and treated their customers and their staff with certain standards and aligned themselves to a standard philosophy, even if they didn't call it that, they even began to change their strap lines. So, for example, Porsche became maintaining standards. Disney and um, Chrysler uplifting standards and um, raising standards. Mm. AXA became redefining standards. So I began to research these firms, see what they meant by this, and here's what I found out. They had spent collectively over £50 million rebranding themselves to be perceived as standards-based companies. You've got good standards. People know what you mean. I can talk to a 15-year-old and say, if you have good standards, what does that mean? A 15-year-old could tell the answer. Try it out with the next 15-year-old. You mean a 10-year-old could tell you about good standards. So if you perceive and set yourself up, even as a small or medium-sized enterprise, as a standards-based company, you haven't got to spend $50 million or £50 million pounds to market yourself and rebrand yourself and change your letterhead and your paper and your strap line. That's what these firms I've just mentioned have done. We haven't got to do that. Mm. The message is already there. We can just take the idea and say it's about being perceived as a standard-based company, even if you're a one-woman or one-man band, setting up standards and letting people know that you're a standards-based company, not just how you act, but tell them you're a standards-based company. They then have a connection with what that means. And again, they bind to you because they perceive greater value and better standards with you than somebody else. This is how you get to 10 times your income as we did. Wow. Does that make sense? That does make sense. And it's, it's more of your presence in the world became stronger, more powerful, and more. It's, not, it's beyond confidence. It's just knowing who you are and projecting Absolutely. that powerful, brilliant, um, standards-focused part of you into the world. And it seems like it just magnetically started attracting the right kind of business to you. Um, Derek, let me ask you, what are your own daily practices that continues to feed your ability to um, focus on your standards and not slip into goal setting, because you've not, not set goals for over a decade now. What are, what are some of your daily practices that support you in continuing to live your life in this way and to run your business in this way? Okay. 
because I've heard of the other work that you do, and I know a bit about your audience, I'm going to say just one thing. The thing that drives me the most is love. Mm. Someone asked me once, what are your values? And we went through the, this thing, and I said, it's this. And she said, well, well what about love? And it's not in your values. And I said, well, no, love isn't a value. No, I am love. You are love. And in doing who we are, we become love. So that's the thing that drives me each and every day. It's not a value. It's who we are and what we are. So that that's to give you the kind of the uh, the spiritual side of things, mm-hmm. and I genuinely believe. Bear in mind, now this is really important. I work in the financial services world, dealing with, with tax issues and investments and returns and yields and coupon and all the rest of it. And I sit down with some what you might call wealthy and relatively wealthy people, high wealthy people, but it all comes across as love. So even though it's about the yield and the return and all the rest of it. They can get that from anywhere. And I tell them when I first meet them for the very first time, I say, look, this stuff and these products and our services pretty much the same as everybody else's. The tax laws, the same. The market's the same. Here's what, here's what we do here and here's how we do it. If this aligns with you, if you feel this is right for you from this kind of approach, then work with us. And they do. So, so love is the thing. On a practical basis, if you want to call that, you know, so I bring that into the meeting. And when I'm sitting with a client, Here's what I do. I sit there and I hold that true self space in love with that person, thinking from me to them, the very best of me in this meeting for this person, which again is come back to love. Mm. Now, also, if you chunk right down to the, the detail of my daily processes, each morning I get up, a standard, as my wife will allude to, I will do some exercises every single day as standard, whether that be yoga whether that be you know, just a series of uh, sit-ups and uh, crunches. I do um, Aikido. I do something every single day, a bit like a bank. You know, In mm. business, we all know we can't just spend our turnover. We can't just spend the bottom line. We've got to put something in the bank. If you put something in the bank, then we can draw it out later when we need it. So health is a bit like that. In fact, health is a lot like that. Mm. And, put, and health yeah. is a standard for you. Of course, yeah. Because mm-hmm. you know, for example, you know, it's um, you know, I have I'm wearing a shirt at the moment. So I'm a UK 16 and a half color size. That's my size. And um, when I get up in the morning and I put I dress and put my top button up and then I put on my tie, I put my finger in my collar. Mm-hmm. And I pull it out again. If I can get my finger in and out of my collar easily, that's fine. Because, you know, that's okay. If one morning I get up and I'm struggling to get my finger in or out, then I know maybe I haven't exercised enough or I've eaten too many pies or pretzels or burgers, whatever, and mm-hmm. I haven't moved very much. So I'm about to breach a standard. So that day I'll do something about it that day. You see, we don't, you don't put on two stone mm-hmm. in a day, do you? Mm-hmm. You don't lose your flexibility in a day. We, we all used to have to put our toe. Now, we can all put our big toe in our mouth when we were, you know, six months old and six years old probably, and maybe even at 12 we can do that. <laughs> but if you can't do that now, you're 40 or 47 or 57, how come? Because one day you broke the stack. You said, I'm not going to stretch today. I'm not going to get my, on my back and put my big toe in my mouth. So now that you're 57 and you can't climb the stairs, it's because the standard that you dropped and breached that day. So now a friend of mine, I talk about him in the, in the book, and I asked him if he had some real major health issues and was um, in a bad way, and he came to me and I talked about his, he was overweight, and I said, so what do you do? When you, you know when you put on weight, he said, Derek, I just buy a bigger shirt, I buy a bigger suit, and I said, Aha! <laughs> and where has that standard got you? Mm. Because standards affect everything. Our friendship standards, our relationship standards, our health. See, if we have bad health standards, eventually we lose the right to serve because we're no longer no longer we'll be here less time than we could have been here if our health and fitness standards mm-hmm. they only fell by the day. In business, you know this, I know this, and most people know this intellectually, but it's actually true on a much deeper level, that whatever you call success occurs one day at a time. Failure takes the same route. Whatever you call failure, that takes the same route. So I do believe that the practical approach in business, and uh, and, uh, by the way, this isn't something that just happened to me. It's important to listen to this conversation. Now I've had the privilege of coaching, and mentoring and speaking for one and two people or 200 people or, or 2,000 or 7,000 people, the, this philosophy and the practical side of it has helped their, mainly business audiences, but some personal development audiences. This has helped them to literally change their lives and their businesses. And what I've been able to do 
if you witness you know, the, uh, the testimonials on the website, he shows actually if these all different people, male and female, business and not business, and people and high income people and normal income people have been able to benefit from this approach, why shouldn't you? So this is the message is your standards, your life, live mm. it for you. Become your true self and live from that place. This is how you get better business results. It sounds the most bizarre thing, but becoming your truth, releasing your gifts into your life, releasing your gifts into your business would naturally improve your business results. If you had a guru with you yeah. every day at work and you had that guru work on you and your business, you'd do better. Well, you have got one. It's called you, mm. your true self. Yeah, and it sounds like the approach of really tapping into your standards and your true self is a daily practice of tapping into your inner genius, which is just brilliant. You know, it's just, just yeah. today I'm going to tap into my genius. And what I admired about what you said is that when you're in a meeting with a client, you are right in that moment with the, the approach of tapping into your true self. You're in that moment tapping into your inner genius and the guidance that God put inside of you from the day that you were born. And it's, it's just amazing that you're able to do that in any given moment. And that's one of the reasons I would strongly encourage people to get your book because you really detail how to do that very, very well. Now, in the last um, three minutes or so, Derek, uh, you mentioned that you had some resources to help business owners and others to really begin to um, embrace this process that you teach. Would you mind sharing a little bit about what you're up to in that area? And I know we're going to have links and things like that on the page when this goes live. But just share with us, what are you doing to help, help uh, business owners like ourselves to embrace these concepts that you shared with us today? Okay. I think the greater part of the work that I've done, and by the way, thank you for the opportunity, the greater part of the work that I've done uh, is in the first book, The Ten Second Philosophy, which of course only came out the end of last year. What we're doing at the moment is working on creating programs and products to be able to use the stuff more practically. So if you're into personal development, um, we have, you know, the, uh, the video which talks about standards and about the perfect life standard system, one of the programs we go through. Even right now, there are, there are free downloads on the website, so you can, for example, go into your first ever, for most people, of course, standard review which is, allows you to do the four R's to review the existing standards that you have. Because most people have no idea that they live their life by these standards, the basis, criteria, level, quantities, and rules. When we talk about reviewing those, then releasing the ones that are no longer useful, that don't allow you to honor and serve yourself and others. Then we replace new standards because nature abhors a vacuum. So actually we put something else in place of those old standards, and then we recommit and live at those new standards. So the process that's called the perfect document that allows you to do that. Mm. In the meantime, uh, um, uh, this is literally, literally brand new, because in 2014, we've I've spent so much time in the studio doing recordings for the corporate standards world and for more of the personal world about how you can take standards into your business to learn the lessons of the Porsches and the Axes and the Disney's and whatever and bring it into your business from the quality of the paper that you use to the transaction levels that you have with others all called standards. So that's in there as well. And the other thing we're doing is actually bringing in, um, which should probably be around the second or third month um, of, of the new year is actually bringing in uh, a 21-day program to allow people to bit by bit mm. to get to know themselves. So I was always going to call it a meditation, but it's not quite that. But mm -hmm. it's almost having a, an awareness time where mm -hmm. we discuss who we are and allow ourselves to access that place each day for 21 days. You know, so that of 21 days, each person has a, more, a better realization of who they are and what they are. So that's coming. So the, the key thing is to go to the website because the products, as they come through, I spent so much time in the studio. It's now about going there and mm -hmm. visiting with us and, and being there. And by the way, I'm also on Facebook. I love having conversations on Facebook. You'll, if you look at the Facebook page, uh, just go to Derek Mills. Um, you'll see so much conversation there, and you'll get so much resources which I've already posted throughout the last two years. It's all accessible right now. Awesome. And we'll have the link to your Facebook page as well where we're going to post this uh, interview. Yeah. Awesome, Derek. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I know our time was short because of some of the technical difficulty we had, but yeah. it was an honor to just be here hearing, um, hearing all of the brilliance that you have unleashed in your own life and now is unleashing into the world and encouraging us to do the same. I really appreciate the time that you've spent to help us understand that and to become more aware of that. And I'm encouraging our viewers and listeners to really reach out to you and to access some of the resources that you have. 
Yeah, I, I want to thank you for that, Alison. And you know, we've just started what, what we call the standards revolution. Mm. And um, I'm encouraging everyone to get on board and join and share. Happiness and success isn't only achieved by setting goals. For the vast majority of the world, that doesn't work for most people most of the time in most places. Well, if we set standards, we get to stay in our truth, to be our true selves, to release our gifts. So join the standards revolution and share it and see the difference we make. Awesome. Thank what a powerful much. ending and a powerful reminder. Thank you, Derek. Have an amazing day. And you. Thank you, Alison. Thanks for joining us here at WealthWithoutGoalsetting.com. We hope you enjoyed this interview, and we invite you to share your thoughts, comments, or questions about this experience. And be sure to join us for even more inspirational stories and best practices from our entire lineup of entrepreneurs. Allison Phillips, Morgana Ray, Amethyst Wildfire, Elizabeth Losey, Karen Evelyn, Sayida Dezale, Maritza Parra, Constance Arnold, Marquesa Petway, Trevor Blake, Derek Mills, and Derek Rydell. You may access all of these interviews at wealthwithoutgoalsetting.com.